Hey there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Today is going to be a little bit more of a businessy type of video, if you will. I am planning for 2022 since it's still relatively the beginning of the year. So no painting video today, but I still think whether you run a small artsy business, a small business, or just want to plan for a future event, whether it be a trip or remodeling a house, things like that. I think there's going to be some takeaways in the video that hopefully you will enjoy. So if you are like me and don't do well with goals, I never have, I might probably never will. Um, this video could possibly be for you. I feel too much pressure if I set a goal, like I want to make this much money or I want to paint this many paintings or I want to do this thing. And, and um, that's just my personality. I don't do well under that pressure, especially if I'm adding the pressure to myself. I do that enough <laughs> without having to set a goals. So instead, how I plan for my new year is I pick out like key things that I definitely want to do in the new year or in the upcoming months. So basically I try to pick like maybe four or five big items, kind of not goals, but big things I want to accomplish. And I think if you pick like four or five, even three big items, depending on what they are, even like if you're going on a trip, you pick like three things you want to see, or you, if you're going to be remodeling your house, you pick maybe two different um, decorating ideas or, um, you know, kind of the big key points that you definitely want to get in that room or the big key points that you definitely want to see on that trip. And then you can really start to narrow down from there. And that is my um, kind of goal setting planning tip. And the other thing I want to touch on is I know I said earlier, I don't like to set goals. And while these may sound like goals and they probably in fact are goals, I feel better by saying they're not goals and I'm just planning for the year because I like to plan. I'm a planner. <laughs> so, um, I find planning is an easier thing for me to try to accomplish than setting a big lofty goal, even though these may actually be big lofty goals. If you're a small business owner or an artist, to me, I feel it's really hard because some things are just out of our control to set sales goals. I know that some people really thrive and do well with these. I don't, um, <laughs> to be completely honest, actually don't even like selling things, if you will. I like making art and that's why I got into art was just to make art. Now to make a living, you obviously have to sell art, but I think it's really hard to set a sales goal. At least it is for me because I, it, it's dependent on so many things. Um, like the past couple years, you know, shows have been canceled that affects things. And that is completely out of your control. And it's also completely out of your control what people may or may not like if they, um, you know, resonate with the painting or don't. That is completely out of your control. And also how much money people have, what their budget is to buy art is completely out of your control. So I just feel better <laughs> not setting these sales goals because these things are not in my control. And they're really hard, I think, when things aren't in your control to it's hard it's easy to get down on yourself if you um you know don't make that sales goal or don't sell that many paintings so i would rather set goals a little bit like what is in my control like i can release a collection that's within my control to a certain extent obviously things can happen and a collection may or may not get released but it's within my control to release that collection versus saying i want to sell x amount of paintings out of that collection I hope that makes sense. And I hope um, if you are an artist or a small business owner and you don't like setting goals, maybe this helps to take a little bit of the pressure off. So this year, my five things are two art shows, 
two collection releases and a big studio cleaning out slash art sale. And then once I have those kind of big items picked out, kind of um, thought through a little bit, I write them down and then I start putting them into my calendar, into the year, spacing them out. So I make sure I have plenty of time in between each event or each thing I wanna accomplish. Okay, and I find it easier to work in quarters. So I break my year out in quarters and I print out, these are just templates that I have found in a Word document. And so I print it out some paper calendars to then jot down and kind of sketch out what the year may look like. I find it helpful to have um, paper to like visualize what my year is going to look like. So I print these calendars out. Now, if you're definitely more of a digital person, there's no need to print these out, but I print them out and then I digitalize them on the computer, which I'll show you in a bit. Last year, I hung a huge calendar back there on the doors on the other side of my studio doors when you first enter into the studio. And I didn't use it that much. So this year, I'm not going to do that. I just printed these out for a visual reference and then I'll, I'll keep them um, in my business folder here to go back and to refer to, but I'm gonna eventually put them into the computer. So I start out with this paper calendar and I pencil in or mark in all of any important dates. Obviously the holidays are already on these calendars, um, so that was a nice easy. And then I fill in like if we have any set travel plans or if I know we have any major trips coming up, any major events, I put those in too. This year we don't have anything scheduled as of now, but um, if I knew of something coming up, I would definitely stick that in here. And then I block in the different other events that I want to do and then kind of take a look at the calendar and make sure that there's a lot of flexibility in there. I've learned a lot in this small business world that you need flexibility. Flexibility is important. And so I try to block in plenty of time or what I think is going to be plenty of time for each event and to get ready for each event. I use just post-it notes and some handmade washi tape that I've had for years to organize my paper calendar and get the dates down. After I get these calendars tentatively laid out, I take a step back and I look at them just to make sure nothing is too close together. I try in theory to have one tops two things every quarter, any two like major things every quarter. So um, the nice thing about this washi tape and or sticky notes is that you can easily remove it and move it around and um, you know just kind of take a look as things go. And also I can change it throughout the year. It's a pretty flexible system. Once I have all of those big items down, I start kind of breaking them down in the different tasks I need to do. What's coming at Studio Stacy? <laughs> Wait for it. Yay! In case you missed that, yes, there is a sale. Yes, it is actually happening right now. If you are interested in it, go sign up for my newsletter. I'll link it down below and you can still get the discount coupon code for the big sale. It's everything on sale on my website. So um, it's a big discount. And like I said, if you're interested, I'll put the uh, newsletter sign up down below. Now the all of the um, kind of big ideas are ironed out a bit. I transfer everything to the computer. I use a program called Trello. If you've been here for a while, you know I love this program. I also use it for some personal things like um, meal planning. It works out really nicely for that. But let me go into here, marketing calendar. So here you will see I have um, different quarters broken down. 
and then within these quarters, I put the different things that I want to do. I wanted to show you a couple of things that I really like about Trello. First, it's digital, so you can easily rearrange things and add more things. And then the other thing I wanted to point out was in like the first quarter I have art shows, the second quarter I also have art shows, the third and fourth quarter I have art shows tab. It's because each quarter I'm doing something slightly different, but it's still the same art show goal or accomplishment, um, if that makes sense to you. So um, I'll show you here on the computer. All right, for example, the first quarter I have under art shows, I have research art shows and applied art shows. That's going to be doing the first quarter. Then the second quarter, hopefully I've gotten into some art shows. So I'm going to be still applying to art shows if I still need to apply to some that are later in the year. But I'm going to take a look specifically at the first show that's coming up, which is in August, which is a nature art show. And that I just want to take a look to make sure I have enough art for that show. I've done that show in the past, so I kind of have an idea of what my sales might be like, and it's strictly nature. So I just want to make sure that I have enough pieces for that. So that's what I'm going to be doing in quarter two for the art show. And then in quarter three, I have under the nature art show, I am going to be, of course, looking at my business cards, making sure I have enough business cards, and that show the Wi-Fi is kind of sketchy there. So I also want to make sure that I have a uh, an option, perhaps a no Wi-Fi card swiper. I have to look into that. And then I also want to look to make sure I have enough material that I might have to order some things like air plants and things like that that I sell a lot at these art shows. And then the Port Warwick art show, I'm going to be, again, now taking a look at other stuff for that second art show because that art show I need to look to see if I have enough art for that. So, you know, each quarter things change, but the goal of the art show kind of, or the overall accomplishment of the art show stays the same, but in each quarter I may have slightly different tasks. So you may also see in each of these quarters, I have a quarter one success or a Q1 success little card in Trello here. And while I don't want to set or try to really measure the amount of sales I make or the amount of paintings I create, things like that, I do want to somewhat keep track of if I've accomplished some of these things. So these are somewhat abstract ideas, um, but I do want to figure out how I can keep track of them. So for example, in quarter one success, I have art shows. I have applied to art shows. That's an easy thing to measure. Did I apply to art shows? Did I not apply to art shows? Then in the connections tab, I have, did I post on all the days I want to post? Again, that's a pretty easy thing to measure. And then I also have, I grew my, grew my YouTube and newsletter subscribers. That is definitely something I want to continue to focus on this year, both YouTube and newsletter subscribers. Both of those things I really enjoy. And then the last thing is the studio art sale. First, I want to make sure I post it every day on Instagram about the sale and the art that is obviously for sale, important goal to have. And I want to also make sure I sent out two newsletter. My newsletters are getting a special coupon code and uh, special deals. So um, if you're not on my newsletter, now's a good time to subscribe. And then I also want to make sure I am mentioned here on YouTube about the art sale. So these are things that are easy to measure, but um, they're not like big, broad or big, massive goals that I have to really stress out about easy task to accomplish. Something else I also wanted to make sure I mention about this Trello program is you can create labels or color coordinate different things. So I have different colors for different events and different tasks. And um, that really helps me take a look at my calendar as a whole, which I'll show you in a second, the calendar mode. And it really helps me take a look at that and just make sure things are, again, are spaced out evenly and I know exactly what I'm doing on every day. Once I have these basic concepts and tasks and I start adding the months of the year, 
And then from there, I can transfer these tasks into the months, add due dates to them and the labels to them. So you saw within each of these bigger accomplishments, I have created a checklist or a smaller task list. And the lovely thing about Trello is you can take these tasks or checklists, convert it into a card, what they call a card, then move that card into whatever month and then add a date to that. So a due date. And then from there, you can also create a color coordinated label. So if it's a newsletter or an Instagram post or whatever it may be for you, you can create these labels. So they're all color coordinated. And then there is a little tab, if you will, called calendar power ups. And it is instantly added to the January calendar because I added the January due date to it. So it's a really cool program. So I'm going to continue to do this and um, then I'm going to pick you back up and probably, I don't know, just a few seconds for you um, and show you the calendar, the tentative calendar that I have so far. And then the great thing also about Trello that I haven't mentioned is it's an app. So you can use it on your desktop like I am. And I find that really helpful for when I'm setting up the year, but then I can refer to it on my phone or tablet um, as I'm on the go different places. And then I can add in different things if I think of something while I'm on the go. It's a really convenient, not sponsored at all. I've just been using it and I love it. So um, anyways, I'm gonna continue on with adding these things into the month and I'll pick you back up and show you the final kind of calendar, or not final, but the final calendar for now. So I know this might seem like a lot of work and it is initially, it usually takes me about two days to get everything kind of um, ironed out, if you will. And I'm not even adding all of the dates in for the year. I'm pretty much focusing on my first quarter um, and then just kind of adding some tentative things throughout the rest of the two quarters or three quarters rather. Um, so at any rate, this is what works for me. I've used it for several years now and it works great. However, having said that, if you are not a planner or a goal setter, please don't feel like just because you've watched this video, you should be. I've gone down that path before and um, don't feel like you need to do what other people are doing. Definitely don't. So I would like to know actually what is working for you. Are you a planner? Are you a goal setter? And um, if so, what are you doing? What works? All right, um, at any rate, back to the computer. And here is what the board looks like so far, the marketing calendar board. You can see as you add different cards and things, it gets quite long, but it's easy to scroll down through. So by the end of the year, most of this is going to be quite full. And then if I go over to the calendar power up, you will see here is what the calendar looks like. And as you can tell, there's quite a few empty dates. And um, there's a reason for that, which I will show you here momentarily. Going back into the home screen of Trello, you will see I have a two week to do list along with the marketing calendar and several other lists. In this two week to do list, I have what they call workflows. And then back to the marketing calendar, I'm going to take and move this January calendar to the two week to do list. And by doing so, I can take a look at just certain um, days and weeks. It kind of breaks it down even further. So when I move this over to the two week to do list, this is what I'm going to be using on a daily basis. And in each of these workflow areas, you'll see I have Monday marketing, Tuesday marketing, Wednesday marketing, and so forth. And each day I have a different task that I want to do pretty much every Monday. I do these things and so forth. So then I can set to do dates on these each Monday, you know, Monday marketing is due. So when I go into the calendar power up mode from my two week to do list, you will see this Monday marketing tab right here. 
And so I know on the 10th, this is what my plan is to do. So um, it's kind of another way just to break this down even further. Again, I love the program. I hope you enjoyed this little planning video and you got something out of it. If you did, you know what to do. Thumbs up, please. It really does help me out. If you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing. I have a lot more painting videos to come. Thanks again for coming along. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.